Welcome. All right. So I'm going to give you a, a walk around the, the system here in the music room. Um, I keep getting asked by people, why don't you post stuff on, on YouTube? Um, well, it's a, it's a pain in the arse and I'm, I'm no good at video editing and all of that stuff. But anyway, here it goes. So this is, um, this is music room one, <laughs> listening room one. Um, you can see it's a, it's a pretty smallish room. It's about uh, 17 feet by 18 feet. Um, but it also opens up into another space here. So you can see I've, um, I've got double doors that I keep open. So it, the room feels like a, a bigger space, acoustically at least. Um, so these are the speakers that I'm playing with at the moment. The Altec Lansing Valencia, the 846B. And you can see that they're up on five inch risers on a wooden plinth. And here are the Aperion Audio uh, Super Tweeters. It's a ribbon super tweeter. Um, I'm just in the sort of early stages of, of experimenting with those. and. So far, the results have been pretty positive. It's a great little unit. Um, comes with its own built-in crossover. It's easily adjustable. Um, so the Valencias are powered at the moment by a first watt J2, which you can see here. That's sitting up on isoacoustic Bordeaux feet on a granite platform. Um, that's a part of a Loven rack system. Um, I also have a set of uh, Alec A6000 monoblocks that I'm not using at the moment. This is one side. Here's the other Valencia. Um, you can see this rat's nest of a crossover here. So obviously this is a, a temporary arrangement. This is um, a Model 19 crossover from Great Plains Audio. So I've just got that kind of rigged up at the moment. Um, what I have uh, coming later this week is a Lingdorf um, unit that I'm going to use as a electronic crossover. So that's going to be the next interesting experiment. Um, I'm using a Aerial Acoustics SW12. Um, actually a pair of those, so I'll just swing over to the, the other side of the room here. Uh, I don't believe in having subwoofers sitting right next to the speakers. Um, they need to be in different parts of the room because we need to be looking for a, a smoother bass response in the room. Um, best way to do that is to get the subs um, where they perform best, which, you know, in this case is in the corner. Um, so I've got a PS Audio P10 conditioner and I think that's a fantastic unit. I heard a big difference in sound when I plugged that in. Um, I'm running an Oppo SACD player that auto also doubles for, um, for the home theater. I've got a, a basic um, projector system, which I'll just swing to now. See the unit's tucked out of the way there nicely, just pulls down when I need it. On the other side of the room, there's a little projector, so movie nights. Um, so, turntable, um, I'm using a, a basis audio, it's the uh, debut signature gold, and it's fitted out with a, a Gram 2.2. And I'm using a Audio Techna MC6310, which you can see there, hopefully. And I also have the matching Audio Techna Step Up Transformer, which is not in use at the moment. Um, the basis audio is a vacuum platter, so there's the vacuum controller, the actual pump. I have sitting in a different room. So you go through the door here, you see the pipes and the pump is around the corner. 
So when I close that door, when I'm listening, um, you can't hear the pump running. Beautiful turntable. Um, really impressed with this thing. It's in pretty mint condition. Uh, it sounds fantastic. Um, I'm using a steelhead phono. And oddly enough, um, the steelhead sounds better whenever, whenever you can use the moving magnet input. So even with a low output moving coil cartridge, um, I try to use the moving magnet input on the steel head. It just sounds better, sounds snappier, more dynamic. Um, you can get away with a cartridge as low as about 0.25 millivolt. Um, the MC6310 is 0.1 millivolt. That's a little bit low for going in on the moving magnet, so that's got to go in on the moving coil. But yeah, the Steelhead's a great phone or stage. Um, it actually has a line input, so you can use it as a, you know, as a single input uh, preamp. Um, so if you've just got a single digital system. And then, beautiful um, Veloce LS1. Platino, that's been upgraded. Um, let's see the battery power supply for the Platino. It's been upgraded to the lithium status. A bit dusty. Going to give stuff a clean up. It sits on the SRA platform, um, which works well. We're using a Denifrips Terminator. It's the um, original with the upgraded DSP. Sits on a symposium platform, and then the uh, the Gaia DDC, which I use <coughs> um, to convert the the uh, ultra rounder output, which is a USB, and then the USB goes into the Gaia, comes out of there as uh, I two S into the Terminator. Um, so that's the room, the main room, um, some vinyl, some vinyl in the other room, a lot of vinyl in storage. I still have some CDs, although um, most of the listening I do um, is coming from a, a Sonic Transporter file server. And then I've got the, uh, the QRD diffusers on the back wall here. Um, those are actually homemade. I didn't make them, but... Um, what a pain. The things weigh a ton. They weigh about £100 a piece. Um, just solid MDF or chipboard or whatever. And then I've got some, some base traps that I made in the corners here. One on the other side. Um, listening chair. Things fall into pieces. Um, I need to get a better chair. I do have another chair that doesn't have the high headrest because really your, your ears should be above chair level when you're seated. Um, so I do have other seating, but right now I'm just, I've been sitting here watching movies, so I just picked out the most comfortable chair. Um, okay, so then next door, let's just walk through here. So we've got the Piega C40s. Um, actually got these up for sale at the moment. I'm just thinking of trying something new, maybe put some more money into um, a better horn speaker, something better than the Valencia. Um, big black box here is the um, H2O um, Signature 250, the S250, which is a nice power amp, ICE, ICE power amp. Super warm, um, super relaxing, plenty of detail. Not what you'd expect from a, a, a digital amp by any means. Um, again, more QRD panels on here. Uh, more vinyl storage in the corner. Um, so I do run subs in this in this room, but not very well. These are just basically um, pretty cheap HSU subs. So on the other side of the room, in the corner there under pile of junk. Um, this is the file server, the Sonic, Sonic Transporter um, i5 that 
you can get from a small green computer. And the you can't see it, but I'm running the uh, S Booster power supply in there, and also the uh, um, eight terabyte hard drive is in there. Turntable, um, Wilson Banesh, full circle with an act. Act 0.5, 0 0.5 torn on. It's a really nice sounding turntable. I mean, it's probably mid level or just maybe a little above entry level. Um, I built the, the round stand that it's sitting on. Um, uh, build it out of um, an acrylic compound and that's sitting up on um, the unicorn footers that I sell on my website um, www.audioresurgence.com check it out only cardio h1202 nice phono stage tube phono stage um, Mr. Beatles at hammertoneaudio.com is the guy you want to talk to about anything I'll make. He's up in Canada. He's the um, North American importer, distributor for Alnick Audio Gear. Um, with the light speed power conditioner. And this guy surprised the heck out of me. It's a wired force sound. Um, it's their preamp with all of the level two, I think, upgrades. And it's one of the most transparent preamps that, that I've, that I've ever owned. Um, it's a beautiful unit and not that expensive. Um, so that's basically it. You know, I've built my own equipment rack here at a solid hardwood. It sits up on, on target stands those are lead filled weigh about 120 pounds a piece um, up on unicorn feet as you can see there and same thing into the floor there um, so that's it so yeah this is music room two here's max hey buddy what's up hi um that's it so thank you for watching www audioresurgence.com check us out